Ladies, gentlemen, and Navi of all ages, welcome to the wonderful world of Pandora. I hope you've been enjoying getting your feet wet, so to say, starting off your wondrous adventure in this beautiful world and coming to grips with it all. And as you do, one of the biggest, most ambitious systems in the game is the crafting and gathering. And the sooner that you understand it all, the easier the entire rest of the game will become. No exaggeration, the way that you craft both equipment and cook food can have an incredibly drastic effect on your journey in every moment of the whole thing. From short-term side buffs like 40% damage reduction or 35% increase to all damage that you do, to gear and the difference between using good and bad materials being sometimes almost double to triple effectiveness on something that you craft. As a result, it's simply something that is really important to understand as early as possible, and so today we are quite simply going to dive head first into the crafting and the cooking system as well as the hunting and the gathering that you use to fuel it, with the goal being once you are done with this video you should have a strong handle on how to get the most out of all of these systems for pretty much the entire of your gameplay journey from this point forward. Starting off then, we should begin with gathering and with hunting, as that is how you will generally just go about getting the materials you need to have for the other mechanics of this topic. When using a crafting table, you can look at the recipes that you have. Some recipes you'll get as rewards for completing quests and main story stuff, others you can simply get from vendors. As an early game example, once you reach the second hub, which is the big tree to avoid any specific spoiling, there is a clothing vendor here who sells you clothing, sure, but if you use the design tab at the top, should Will give you a purple recipe for three different clothing slots for free. The same goes for the weapon vendor in this hub too, whose design tab holds two purple quality weapon recipes. You can get all of these for no cost at all, and then you can craft all these designs using various materials that you can find out in the world for free. From the recipes on the crafting table, it will tell you what type of materials you need to craft your item of choice. You can pin that in the corner or just use it to open up your hunting guide. This is an extremely important thing to be aware of the hunting guide and to know how to use it properly. This will let you click these specific materials that you're looking for, then it will show you any plants or animals that you have seen that drop that material. You can then pin the plant or animal to make them show up more clearly when you use your Navi senses, or you can look at even more detailed descriptions of them, which will tell you exactly what areas they will spawn in, and more importantly, the areas which have a higher chance of rare versions of the version of this spawning as well. This is very important because rare versions of crafting materials are simply a higher quality version to work with, and the quality of material defines the potency of your craft. There are three tiers of quality, green, purple, and yellow or orange. Within these tiers, you can also shift up or down a few points of quality on a type of material, depending on if you meet the harvest conditions correctly. For a plant, one of these conditions is always how smoothly that you harvest it, which is playing the minigame where you pull at the right angle to cause minimal damage and getting it right, and then the other one is always some sort of weather or climate condition. Day, night, rain, dry, one of those kinds of things, and those simply require you to harvest it at the perfect moment in time. These will have a slight impact on quality, but the actual color rarity jumps are the biggest thing here, so again, follow your hunter's guide to find the best ones. There is a similar system for animal parts as well, where animals will have their own rarity that mostly goes up with the combat level of the creature, with the actual maturity of it as it gets older, as it gets more experienced as an animal, and as you see here, there are two hammerheads right beside each other in front of me, which are notably above the combat level that I am approaching the map myself. And when I inspect them with the Navi senses, it shows that one of them is slightly higher level, and it will give us the highest tier materials. One is slightly lower, and only gives purple materials. If you then were to kill the bigger boy, he will give you his goodies, simple as that. And like plants, the values within a tier can shift slightly for the quality of the harvest too. For wildlife, the two options are merciful kill and clean kill. A merciful kill is getting the kill done before the animal starts running around, bleeding or feeling pain, so doing it quickly. A clean kill is only inflicting damage on the weak points of the animal so as not to actually damage the parts. Even if you fail at both though, the overall quality will still stay the same, so it can still even be worth taking two minutes to slowly hunt down an orange quality creature way above your pay grade if you're actually just capable of surviving enough to do it because it will give you a boost in the quality of the next piece of equipment or food that you craft with it, which can again make a really big difference moving forwards. All the things I just said are mostly relevant to crafting gear with all these things as gear crafting simply makes the gear better the higher quality of the materials that you get and you use for doing so, but it also applies to actually cooking. Higher quality food ingredients can give you stronger buffs and also make them last for a longer duration as well. Crafting itself is essentially as simple as check vendors for recipes, otherwise you just get them from quests. If you have a recipe that you want to craft, pin the materials, look in the hunter's guide, go to the rare spawns, ideally in the right conditions as well, and if you find some high quality stuff, it will immediately be able to be turned into high quality gear. Cooking is a bit more intricate as a system though, so let's talk about that. Raw ingredients are still edible, you can just eat raw stuff that you pick up in the wild, but they provide relatively very little energy meter, only giving you 25. What the energy meter actually does then is act as your sort of health regen. While you have energy, you will automatically regenerate health 
health if you don't take damage for a moment. Any healing that you do this way will lower your energy, as will time past and movement. Once your energy is empty, you won't be able to naturally regenerate health until you fill it up some more, so energy is important to stay on top of. A cooked meal, unless it's a spectacular failure, which we'll get into afterwards, will always give you 100 energy, filling your bar completely, and as a result, it's worth doing even just for that, even if nothing else, as two ingredients in a cooked meal is worth double what each of those ingredients would be worth, alone and raw. Aside from rarity of ingredients, which we've talked about before, which exist to increase the buff duration and potency, there are more specific things to take note of here too. Every ingredient in the game falls into one of ten categories, regardless of the specific ingredient that it is. The category is what will define the actual buff that it gives you, and the meal that it will create depending on the order you put it in, so pay attention to that above all else. The categories are fatty meat, lean meat, fruit, herbs, milk, mushrooms, nectar, seeds, eggs, and fish. You can choose two ingredients to put together to make a meal, and some of these are good and some of them are very bad to put together. Specifically, while I do generally recommend exploring and experimentation by putting different things together to see what kinds of buffs you can get, there are some notable exceptions to that. You should never ever mix together fruit and fish, meat and nectar, or mushrooms with specifically lean meat. Fatty meat is fine. When you combine any of those groupings I just mentioned, the results will be some gross ruined food that only gives you 50 energy instead of 100 and removes all the positive buffs instead reducing your maximum energy for 20 seconds after eating. So it's just purely bad. You do not want this. You never want to do it. Alternatively, some good starter recipes, things that you want to use, are lean meat with fruit. These put together gives you a big healthy 35% damage increase. You can also just put two lean meat together, but lean meat is harder to get than fruit, so it's better to do it that way, and the duration of this depends on the quality of the ingredients. 35% increased damage is a lot, and that can help you overcome some obstacles you would otherwise maybe not be ready for. Alternatively to that, fatty meat with egg is the opposite, giving you damage reduction from wildlife and RDA. A standard green quality version will give 30% reduction, but I'm using some really high quality meat, which will make it give me 40% instead. Fruit and mushroom gives you 30% bonus base health, so there are some very strong ways to take advantage of food in this game once you're actually aware of how to do so, and the way to actually get the good materials to actually make them. A secondary thing to be aware of is outside of cooking itself, there are food vendors in various hubs within the game, and every food vendor will not only sell high quality materials that can be hard to find otherwise, which is really nice to just know where they are, but they also sell one meal each that you cannot craft yourself, their signature dish, so to say, with a special effect. For example, this one from the second hub in the game gives you the ability to see higher quality plants and wildlife without using Navi Sense for a few minutes, which is incredibly strong for things like just flying around or exploring and just having to spot them from a distance, which is very easy to look and just find these things that would be a lot harder to notice otherwise. It's really good to check and know about these when you reach each hub, just talk to each of the cooking vendors and see what they actually have to sell. One final tip then is quite simply, well, the, the maker skill tree option. This skill tree is something that most people probably won't look too deep into, as it's less exciting on the surface than the fighting skills, but these are actually really quite valuable. Everything from letting you proc double gathers, get free high quality items from vendors, extra duration or potency on the buffs of your meals. These are it's just a lot of value in here if you're actually spending time on crafting, and I definitely recommend looking at it and considering if you want to make this investment. That pretty much does it then, everyone. Your starter guide to crafting, cooking, gathering, and hunting in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Your best friend for this is, of course, the hunting guide, so make sure that you get used to opening it up and working around with it and seeing how it actually functions. But mostly this was just a try and help people come to understand the system early on in the game, realizing the crazy power that it can actually offer you if you dive into it properly and also how simple it actually is to be successful with once you know how to use it. I hope you've all enjoyed this end, and hopefully it's helped each teach you all a little bit to make the game a bit easier, more comfortable, and more enjoyable for you from this point forward. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye